In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix missing or wrong authors in your Joomla articles, especially if you have a lot of them. Hey there, Joomla fans. Tim Davis here. I'm a Joomla fan too. And thanks for tuning in to Maintenance Monday number 82. I wrote it down this time in case I forgot. Number 82 here on the Basic Joomla Tutorials channel. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for your support of this channel. If you're watching live, say hi in chat and uh, give this video a like, it'll help others find it. And if you're watching the recording, then please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. I had someone leave a very kind comment on the channel asking me to get to the point quicker in these live streams. And so I'm gonna do that today. And then afterwards, we'll catch up on the news. I got a bunch of news to share with you. So let's just head right on over to the screen here now. Uh, remember, go to basicjuma.com forward slash giveaways, enter this month's giveaway for a bunch of great Joomla prizes that you can see there. Uh, okay, why today's topic? Well, today's topic came about because as I was uh, working on one of my sites the other day, I noticed that one of uh, I had a whole bunch of articles that had no author. The author is just listed as none. So today I'm just gonna show you how to change that, but more commonly, the error that you might be experiencing is one that says unable to load user with ID, and then there's a user ID number, and we're going to fix that first. Let me show you that error. We'll go to content and articles here. I broke this article last night on purpose so I could bring the error up. You go into an article, you click on it, you go in and you will see that it says J user load unable to load user with id 5516 i've got a lot of users on this site uh, but basically what i did to cause that error to come up was to delete the user that was assigned as the author or what who was said as the author of this article so what happens is you open the article that just cannot find who that user is they don't exist anymore in the system doesn't affect the article from coming up, but it's really not tidy. And if you're showing the name of the author of an article uh, in your um, in your Joomla site, um, oh, uh, uh, then um, uh, <laughs> just my grandson just said hi, Grandpa, in the chat here. He's upstairs. He's visiting us. Uh, if you're displaying author in your articles on your site, then you want the actual name to appear there. So here's how we're going to fix this. Let me just close out of this. And then I'm gonna to go to, we're gonna use an extension that we've used before in lots of tutorials and Maintenance Mondays, uh, DB Replacer from Regular Labs. So you can go to regularlabs.com and get that. Uh, before you do anything in DB Replacer, remember, make sure that you back up your site because what you're doing with this extension is you are actually changing the database for your site. And if you do something wrong, as I have done in the past, you uh, want to be, you, you can't just undo any changes you make here. You want, you'll, so you'll need a backup to go. And I have plenty of tutorials on that here on the site. Now, uh, and, uh, and tutorials on, um, on, on backing up with Akiba. So check out the playlist, they'll be in the description below. So what we're going to do is here, when you open up DB Replacer, it uh, automatically goes to the content, the table content, and it has intro text and full text selected. What we're going to do here is select created by, and we're going to search for the name of the, the number of the user that no longer exists. All right, so in this case, let me just go back here and we'll open it up and get that number again. 5516, I believe it was, yes. So we will search for 5516. And also what we want to do is know the, rep the ID of another author that we want to sign as the author of this, um, uh, of this article. Now I've already done that and I'll just look, uh, my user ID is 62 on this. You might recognize that number. This is a very old Juma site that's been converted many times. So 62 was the default admin user ID uh, and a new site. Uh, now we're just going to search click search only one is going to f come up because I only broke one article in this case the search string is found in one row here it is and we'll see that in the create it by uh, not table uh, but column we'll see 5516 is going to be replaced and then it will be replaced with 62 so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say yes and yes now we're just fixing one article here, so don't worry. Uh, I'll give you show you one that's got a lot more to fix later on. And in just a second, a quirky problem with having zero as the author. 
if we go back over to the article here, we can hit refresh and that error is going to go away. And actually when I go to publishing, you'll see the created by and then there's my ID. I don't even have to save and close this because we already changed it in the database. All right, so there's one way to get rid of that pesky error, unable to load user with ID 62. You know, maybe you've migrated a site and numbers got changed or someone deleted their, um, uh, their account and they had articles on there. Um, in fact, you might even want to create a, if someone's deleted their uh, account and their articles are there, you might want to create a profile for a user just called a uh, ghost or memories from the past. And then you can find out the ID of that new one and then just replace it and everything is solved uh, there. All right, now the second situation occurs when author is set to none. Now, I'm going to go to search tools here. I'm going to go to select author and at the top it actually says none. Let's go enter. And you'll see I have all these articles that somehow ended up with author being none. And I'm not quite sure how this happened. Some of them are very recent. Some of them go back to 2016. And I actually have, let's see, this is 50 articles to a page. I have three pages, so there's over 100. Now, an interesting thing when you go to do the find and replace in this instance is that if I go and search for zero, in the database because there's actually is a zero in that database it says none when you view it in joomla but when you look at the actual database uh category i created by is a zero it just shows zero or it's empty um if you search for zero let me take out this number here search it's going to say it didn't find anything in fact it's not even looking for anything but what we can do is put in here, oh, there's finished searching. Uh, let's see here, we scroll across. Uh, things are, okay, yeah, so I'm searching for zero, but it's still showing me all of the normal numbers created by, so that's not working. What we want to do here is search for null, and you'll see in the instructions right there, star equals all, null equals empty or null. So let's search for all of the articles that have null. Okay, and you'll see we found 110 rows. And then this is where we see over here, create it by, there's a zero in there. But when we search for zero, it did not, uh, it, it, it couldn't find us. It. Like search, look for nothing. So nothing has to be something on a computer so it gets assigned a number. Um, just like a space bar has a number in Word documents. All right, so there is, we look for articles that are null. Next, we need to decide who we're going to assign those articles to. Uh, again, we could use the old profile, my old ID, 62. I'm pretty sure as I just take a quick look down here, these are all uh, just things for my newsletter, nothing that I specifically written. So I, I, my wife does a lot of work on the site, so I could actually put her ID in there, which is, uh, let's see. What is her ID? It's 86. That's the year we were married. That actually works out pretty well. But just in case one of these articles that's messed up in there is actually something that I've written instead of something that I've posted, because I have a lot of jokes and things on here, I will go ahead and I'll put 62. Now we're going to go, um, all right, now just pro, just a pro tip here. If you want to change the user, the the, the user ID or the um, created, uh, the the created ID for just one category of articles, you would use this field up here, the where field. This is something that comes with the pro version of DB replacer. And you would just type in cat ID equals, and that's just say 73, all right? So cat ID equals 73. I looked up one of the categories of articles and I picked 73. It's one of the common ones down here. But you see, we found 110 rows there. When we search, we will now see instead of 110 rows, we find 92 rows. So I could actually replace those 110, uh, those 92 with my wife's created by ID. I'll search just one more time because I changed that and it's found 92. Da, 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 da. It's doing the search right now. This is a big database. 
Let's see, I need to get the place where it's going to ask me if I want to replace. That's not working. Huh. Well, maybe let's just take that category ID out and search again. Something's not working there. Well, another video for me to show to Peter to see what was going on. Anyways, what you would do is you would uh, go when this button lights up here and you would go uh, replace. Oh, it actually is a link. It's just super faded. Let's put that back in there. Let's see if that's actually going to work. I wonder why that's so faded. No, that's not working. All right. Well, we'll have to see how to get that fixed or what the issue is. Anyways, normally what you do is you say, go ahead and replace this and it replaces everything and then you have fixed your issue. Anyways, a little glitch there at the end, uh, but in the meantime, for now, let's go to the full screen here. Uh, that's it. If you have articles that have the wrong uh, authors assigned to them or no authors assigned to them and you want to change them in bulk, then this is the tool to use. And it usually does work for me, but you know, that's what happens when you go live. So listen, uh, we're going to continue on with chat and catch up on a bunch of things. I have some things to share about my crazy week last week. But for those of you that are not sticking around, thanks for your support of this channel. Thanks for watching. And as I said, please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications and give this video a like so others can find it. So until the next time, enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless. And hello to everyone who is staying. Well, that's very odd that that did not work. Who knows why? Anyways, as you can see, we'll switch over to chat here. We have a little bit of a delay happening on the channel here. Let me get to the right screen that I'm looking at here. You'll see up at the top, my grandson saying hello. Hey, Mary. Yeah, uh, Mary says she's done this with PHP my admin, but this is much easier. Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this basically, I guess sort of, this is doing the same thing that PHP my admin does, just giving you a graphical user interface to interact directly with the code that all the nerds in the background would be playing with. So, there's my grandson over here waving. I put him on here, but YouTube's getting really itchy lately about having minors on video so then I have to report a whole bunch of things but yes my grandson Tori is here for two weeks and uh, we're having a good time um, we were out uh, yesterday playing some Pokemon all right so some news uh, what's some things I want to update you on first here um, okay uh, da, 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 da. oh here we go got my notes right here Oh, I'm going to post the Zoom meeting. And look, I even have a note to myself for joining it today. So, okay. If you want to chat on Zoom with your voice, call in here. There's, there's the link there. And I'm going to get in there as well right now. Uh, by the way, if you want to use your phone, let me know and I'll post you the link for finding a local call for uh, for how you can call in with this. But it dawned on me just the other night that anybody who's watching has an internet connection. And uh, although except in the case uh, where um, things are not uh, great for the internet, I think hardly anyone's going to phone. No one has phoned in yet. You always can anyways. All right. So I am in there. Great. Uh, for Okay, so hey, what's been happening around here at CyberSalt World Headquarters? Let me tell you, last, you know, I, I do not, uh, I do not really like to go to bed at night, as many of you are late night people as well. And so, uh, let me just uh, get in the right camera here. Uh, and so, yes, my database crashed, Mary. So it wasn't even so much a database crash, but here's what happened. So my wife was coming back from being away for two weeks, and that was on Wednesday. So Tuesday night, I'm getting ready. I want to get a good night's sleep because the next day is going to be a big cleanup day here around the uh, around the house. Not super big, but you know, I try to tidy things up and get things so that that are really nice uh, for her when she comes back. And I'm sitting here. It's like midnight. It's 12:30, and I'm thinking like, oh, 
I could just go to bed. I thought, well, I'll just do something else. And I see this email saying that my uh, uh, my SQL install on one of my servers, which I've always referred to as my slower server, is out of date and there's an update for it. So I think, well, you know what, I'll go, I'll just update that now. So I uh, run the update and I'm installing it and it gets stuck at a certain point and it can't go any farther, uh, like step four in, in the process. So while I am uh, sitting there and I think, oh, step four, and I thought, you know, my maintenance Monday was uh, ask for help. So I thought instead of struggling with this over and over again, I'm going to open up a ticket with cPanel and I'm going to say, hey, this is stuck. Can, can you help me out? Uh, so they, uh, he, uh, very quickly, they say, um, uh, you know, within minutes, yes, we've got your ticket. I'm looking at it right now. I'll, I'll report back very soon. So I think, okay, well, I put on YouTube, I put on uh, What's My Line. So I figure I'll watch half hour What's My Line while this is coming in. Then he says, oh, it's getting stuck at four and uh, stage step four. And, uh, oh, I see what happened was the the server administrator mm -hmm, uh, has changed the location where my SQL databases are saved. And that is true. Uh, in cPanel, when you, in WHM, Web Hosting Manager, when you install it, they, they put they store databases inside of this one partition or one area. I don't fully understand it. It's like it's having a server making a baby. You don't have to understand everything in order to do it. Um, uh, anyways, the databases get big to the point where that little partition or that area fills and then your computer doesn't serve up, the server doesn't serve up web pages. So they, there's instructions and forms on how you can move it from this little min, minuscule space to this big, to the big huge file space. So I move it to where all my other art, uh, all my other hosting accounts are for my clients. It's working great, but apparently I missed another file where I'm supposed to say, hey, I moved this to here. So he changes that and then uh, does the update again. And so anyways, meanwhile, I'm into my second and third and fourth, what's my line? And it's like four in the morning. and. And in the, in the meantime, all the sites are down. So I'm doing this at night. But any, any site that depends on a database is, is gonzo right now. It's coming up, can't connect a database or error. And of course, as we all know, Joomla really likes to have a database connection. So, um, oh boy. Anyways, five o'clock comes around. He says, ah, it's just finishing step seven, it's, it's, but it should be done soon. So I said, look, I'm gonna, I gotta get some sleep. I'll leave this in your uh, qualified hands and I'm sure you're fine. So I go to bed. I, that's about 5.30, I don't know, 6 o'clock, I'm falling asleep. 7.30, it's, I kind of wake up because I realize that I have a breakfast meeting that I have to go to, but long, that's a long story. Anyways, I figure, okay, well, I'll come down. I go to the computer. I'll turn it on. All the sites are on and that will be great. I turn on the site, uh, the computer. I go to a website, still getting the error message. I check my emails and now there's uh, there's an email saying, oh, I've had a, um, I have to escalate this to someone else. There's a pro, uh, something's not working. And then the person who's escalated to, or in a shift change, uh, gives me this email that says, um, oh, uh, the, basically, man, this is, this is, yeah, this is some, because of the updates that have happened two places, you need to merge all the databases together. And we don't, we don't really have the tools for that. And so, um, we recommend you contact a, a MySQL expert to handle this for you. Well, um, that was, I, I tell you, you know that, you know that panic moment when you think, oh no, I've accidentally deleted everything or, oh no, this is going to get a lot of my clients upset or whatever. Anyways, it's a digital x lax moment. And I, I just had one of those moments of sheer panic um and i prayed i don't just pray when i'm panicked but uh then you know there's there's everyday regular prayer and then there's and there's that conversational prayer and all kinds of, you know uh, but then there's that panic prayer anyway so i went to the I, I i i tried i looked i i mean i didn't even understand the problem well enough even to explain it to an expert and anyway so i went to the breakfast meeting i thought i'm just going to leave this because it's it's down Email apparently was still working because nobody was contacting me about their emails not working. So anyways, went to the breakfast, had some ideas to try, came back. Um, 
Uh, yeah, did my normal morning routine, a bit more prayer, did my morning Bible reading, just so I'm going to get everything in place that's important to me and just stay settled and not just freak out on this. Uh, then my friend Juan from Port Angeles, Washington, who has a lot of clients hosting on my site, called me. And uh, he, he's, he's a server guy. He knows a lot of things about servers. Uh, anyway, so we worked over the next couple of hours. One of the things I thought to try was to move an account from the broke now I will call it the broken server over to my other server and see if everything is still there. So I moved one one of my web pages over and then it came back on. It worked. So it's like, oh, that's great. I mean I had backups of these as well. So but it's just you know restoring a backup and, and would restoring a backup work because this other server my SQL is broken on. So um then I thought, well, what if I move that that account back onto the other server and in the transfer process, maybe it'll set up properly and work. So I tried that. Nope. Didn't work. So I transferred it back. And then what I did was I transferred, I spent the rest of the morning and it worked fairly smoothly. And I transferred all of the clients from that server over to my other server, except for one of my sites, which I'm leaving there to play around and see if it will, uh, if I can fix this, if the server fix the server up anyway so that was kind of got that all done probably around 2 2 30 in the afternoon i'm going on about an hour and a half sleep there i'm totally hazed from the adrenaline rush of all of this and the panic and uh and i have to pick my wife up at the airport at 10 to 8 so and i haven't done any of my cleaning up that i wanted to do uh planning for that day so that was and of course, that was last Wednesday, which is when I had the maintenance, uh, the Watch Me Work live stream all set up uh, for email deliverability, which will happen again this Wednesday. I'm going to try it again. Uh, anyway, so that was um, that was what happened. On the plus side, it's an opportunity for me to reorganize things. I've reorganizing uh, dedicated IPs and clients. Um, a lot of the you know the sites are just running faster on the on the on the newer on the newer server so i should have moved those over a while ago but i i they, that server is jammed up with a bunch of like tens of gigabytes of junk files from an account that uh, had to get sorted out too so anyways um that was that was what happened uh last week and so things are running nicely here uh nobody's data was lost some people got some email that they deleted it showed up later on uh, there's a few little hiccups here and there one person was using an ip address for the mail server so when their site got changed they couldn't connect and but they connected to the old server sent mail and uh, they weren't getting it in their other devices that were set up properly so just little quirky things like that but i am i am grateful and thankful to say that Everything's moving along smoothly, and I'm actually so uh, I just continue to reorganize and 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 that. So now I heard the doorbell ring. So mystery guest, enter now. <laughs> who knows what that who that was? All right, so that's one bit of news. I, I I've got some other stuff here too. I thought you know I'm just gonna put this down. What to tell you? Um. Yeah. So, oh, the color. Uh, all right. So what? Uh, so watch me work Wednesday. This Wednesday, we'll redo that um, topic, or well, I'll we'll do that topic. Email deliverability. We're going to look at setting up DKIM, SPF, um, uh, the one that's after that. Well, DMARC, and also, oh, I can't remember what the other one is. Uh, oh, reverse DNS. Uh, and actually, in my in my last last Wednesday when I was moving all these accounts around I got really good at the whole routine of that so so I'm actually happy it's been something a little bit foggy in my brain at times but uh, okay so that's uh, also uh, you'll notice the color is not flickering anymore uh, every now and then the color would just change and come in and change and come out and um, and just flicker at times so I went, I thought, I wonder if there's something auto happening. I went into controls for the camera and I found, yes, the auto, auto light feature or lightning or whatever was on 
So I turn that off, I've set some colors, and so now that doesn't flicker. Uh, Autofocus is off, so now I can come up close here and I can go back, and you don't get that whole uh, fogginess that's happening, so that's happening. Uh, let me see, you've got some in chat here that I have to read. Uh, Mary uh, says the email deliverability tips is something she's looking forward to. She has a couple new sites that need to get started with ACY mailing. Excellent. Yes, and all things you need a refresher for. Yeah, this is, uh, um, yeah, yeah, uh, just a sneak preview because I don't want to give it all away for Wednesday. Otherwise, I have nothing to talk about. But uh, super important, it's, it's, this real sense amongst, uh, for email deliverability is that there's, is that receiving hosting companies want to see that there's been some, there's been some kind of human touch on the email setup. Um, it seems kind of odd, but um, uh, they're looking for things that if there's a, you know, that a human being has done and that gives them more confidence that the mail is legitimate. So that's kind of a cool thing that we will see. Uh, the other, so what, the, I had another note here. Oh, a new camera angle too. I don't know if you noticed that the camera angle has changed a little bit, but and I was going to take a picture of this to show you. Anyways, I bought... I could show you what I bought. No, uh, yeah, let's go here. Yeah, let's go to my go to my orders on Amazon, and I will just get through my account here. Uh, and there it is. So let me switch over. I bought one of these for my office. It is a desk clamp mount suspension boom scissor arm tripod stand holder for Logitech webcam. So as you can see, in fact, here, let me just uh, do, do, do amazon.com, let's see here. I can post a link for this in just a second. Let me get to a short one here. Um, Amazon.com. Somewhere up here, I should be able to post the link here. Stripe. Huh. Oh, sign in. There we go. Oh, and this is another thing that's been messed up in the past. Let's try what my password is. Oh, I've got it right there. There we go. C90, uh, C90, uh, boom arm. Boom goes the arm. Uh, I don't think it was that. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. My orders. I don't think I had, oh, my orders. Here we go. Let's go get to it this way. That's on the Canadian site. Well, this is going smoothly, isn't it? Typically, what I do is I will uh, go to the Canadian site and then I change from .ca to .com, and then that works. But I guess I wasn't uh, logged in. All right, here's the link. If you want to look at it, uh, but basically, um, if you look back at the live stream that I did on the uh, open house around New Year's Day. I had a full-size tripod and a big, long wooden piece, a piece of wood holding the camera out, but I had to keep walking around the tripod, and it was really becoming a drag. So I, I got this boom arm so that I can also uh, move it around, because when I wasn't using the camera on the tripod, I would untwist it off of the, the screw mount, and that was... Uh, jimming up the uh, wires and I didn't want to wear those out then I move it and attach it to a screen and it would still shake so this boom arm actually allows me to uh, I don't have it attached to a desk but I have the base zap strap to a post that I have uh, set up here but I can now not only can I this is probably the angle that you're used to here I can not only have it whoops easy didn't mean to do that can not only have it super wide out like the angle that you're used to, but I can now lower it down 
to something a bit lower. Of course, I have to bend over to see that. Uh, but which is great because with the up and down, with the sit-stand desk, I can move the camera down lower. And I can also move it over a bit like this. And just fix this angle here. Do, do, do. And be a little bit more face on with what's happening on the screen because, you know, I was really tired of showing everyone my terrible profile. And by terrible profile, I mean the back of my neck and the jowls that I'm working on. Anyway, so there's a, a kind of a new camera angle that's happening. And partly I need to do that because I'm starting a YouTube channel interviewing someone for a client. And uh, so I need to have a little, something slightly better for when I'm talking to them. I'm actually thinking about putting in a curtain that will just close off this back area. And uh, I've been looking at YouTube channels and seeing the ones that have nice backgrounds. And I like orange. Just need I need to come up with something that's uh, a, bit, a bit better. But this, for the price of it, really good and uh, kind of kind of nice for using the webcam for a number of different angles. That's pretty much all my notes that I have for catching up here uh, that I was going to talk about just to share what's going on around here. Other than I'm speaking tonight at, uh, at a business group. I'm going to talk to them uh, just about some of the key basic things that you need to know and have in place for managing your digital assets. You know, practical stuff like make sure your domain is in your own name, not in the name of someone who helped you register it. Uh, having passwords, you know, make sure you know the passwords for things, uh, just general things like that. Um, and uh, probably we'll talk a little bit about Joomla, of course, just telling, but I, I you know, I'm not going to be cultish about the Joomla thing. I'll just say, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, there's so many people coming from different way, places that use different products to get them going. And, you know, if they make a website to just get started, to wet their feet on making a website and, uh, and they use something that's not going to be best for them down the road, then, uh, you know, that's all right. We've all been there. They can start over. They can do it again. Redo it. Um, but anyways, our, when we get to, when we're talking to clients, oh, that's still going to shake a little bit there for a bit. When we're talking to clients, you know, we owe it to them to tell them the best path forward for them to choose. Uh, I use the Blue Yeti mic and what camera? I use this camera right here. Let's see here. Logitech C920. Uh, and uh, let's see. So, and I'm going to tell you because I watched a review on the C922. Uh, which is basically the same case as the C90, Logitech C920. Where are you? That's not it. Here it is here. Oh, in fact, they've got, uh, what do they have as Amazon's choice here? Oh, so they have C922 Pro Stream Webcam. Now, look at that. They're the same price. Interesting. So there is a review on the C920 and the C922. C922 has this thing called background replacement technology, which is basically going to guess at what your background is and take it out. And and uh, as promising as that was, the guy wasn't totally super impressed with it. But uh, yeah, so uh, but the interesting thing is that he's his the C922 was more expensive, like it was. Uh, maybe an extra 30 or 40 dollars compared to the c920 but here they are seven cents apart uh, now these are my prime prices too i have amazon prime so you see it's 99 dollars um but yeah this is a really good webcam and uh yeah i'm using the blue yeti mic which is oh you've heard me rant and rave about that mic before it is so great it's the stuff I do my narrating with um, it's yeah I like it for the live stream um, so if you're gonna have it just on the desk it also has a, a desk mount which that it comes with a desk mount which is nice but um, I found that the, just if I touch the table or it, it would 
pick up through the mount. So that's why I went with the boom. Um, and now you'll see here, uh, I bought that for the C90, I bought that uh, boom arm, but they have also this flexible jaw long arm swivel clamp. And I looked at this, some of the reviews say it's great, some say uh, it's super stiff. Um, I looked at, I looked at, and I, I think the boom arm works better for me in this case. Um, this just for what I need it for reach, because uh, you know for attaching, you know the the reason that I don't have the the camera right on the screen is because when when I move the desk here, as you can see, the microphone is moving. Uh, the the camera was too, so I need the camera mounted somewhere that's not mounted to my desk. And I could have just mounted it to the wall somewhere, which would have worked as well. But I still need the boom arm. And I think the boom arm is probably a little bit better. Partly because um, this, uh, this clamp here, it looks like you're going to lose a lot of rigidness right here. In the, in, the first, uh, in the first bend there, you don't get the hard right angle that you might want. Whereas with the boom arm, I can really pull it down. So I think the boom arm is actually give you some more positions in this. Uh, yeah, Blue Yeti, uh, that is, uh, this microphone here. Now this, uh, here's the blue, here's the blue Blackout Yeti USB microphone with Knox Studio Boom Arm. For 139, let's check this out here. My only thought is this is a heavy mic. This is not a light mic, and uh, so you want to make sure. Uh, I'll tell you the Rhodes boom arm that I have is really super strong, and it's got a really nice mounting thing for uh, let's see, for on the mounting on the desk. Let's see if we can look at what they've got here. That's kind of hidden behind me here. Um, let me just turn off my screen here. Or just hide me here. Let's see. I think this will do that. Nope. C90. Yeah, that should. Oh. Huh. How do I do that? Let's go to editor. Oh, okay. Maybe I was making myself disappear there. Yeah, I was. Okay. I was looking somewhere else. Uh, so down here in the bottom right, that's, uh, that looks, looks all right. But let me show you the mounts on the Rhodes Blue Yeti. Let's go back here. Let's find uh, Blue Yeti. Here's the Amazon choice here. They got a bunch of different colors too. I got black. Uh, watch as you're going through the color choices here because the color can change. No, they didn't have red, but yeah, see 109 bucks paying extra for satin red. Uh, steel red, 123. So anyways, if the camera's gonna show up in the in a scene and that's part of the decorating, that's worth it. I got the, the black and the text link here. For you guys that are following along, I will see here. Let's see. Let's see if that's someone give me a message from the, for the live stream here. Uh, for those of you that are following along, let me give you the check thing there. Okay. Uh, the Rhodes Arm. How do you spell Rhode? Rhode Blue Yeti R O D E. All right, here's the, uh, let's find out where that is. Huh, huh, huh. Let's search for yet road, bike, boom arm. Dude, I wonder. Do, 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 boy, let's see, do they have it? Uh, the software that switches between the camera and your computer screen comes with the camera. No, it that's uh, that's Streamlabs OBS. That um, 
Uh, so, and I'll show you that in a second. Let me just find this uh, boom arm here. I'll be surprised if they don't sell it anymore. Uh, maybe it's just not coming up. Let me go back to my Canadian account here. Amazon. And let's see my account here. Why don't I just switch this over? I haven't ordered anything I don't want you guys to see, but just the same. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? All right. My orders. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go back. When did I order this? Past six months? I think I ordered this in 2017. Let's see. There we go. I don't know why that's not showing up in uh Baloo Mara, hello, how are you today? Thanks for coming into the live stream. All right, so here's the boom arm, and here's what I want to show you. Um Again, I don't have the link there. There we go. Copy that. Blue, where are you from? I think, have, have you been on a live stream before? That seems to be a new name for me. Okay, so that is the link. Yeah, so that is the link to the... Um, to the Rhodes boom arm and let me show you the base here this base is super super meaty and that is the base that actually clamps on to the desk uh, I could probably show you that now if I turn uh, but this is really base first of all this this arm is really heavy duty it is heavy it is really spring loaded nicely too in fact, they have a warning on it when you open up the package uh, saying, just be careful, it's spring loaded. And when I opened it, it really it were, really gave a jump. So it's an excellent, excellent boom arm for that. Um, but this base is really meaty and really, really grabs a lot of the table and is really very stable. Let me turn my camera back on here. There we go. And what I will do is now through the magic of my swinging boom arm, I'll move this down and I will show you the get this over as far as I can with respect to uh, get this out of the way here yeah so this this is all I think that's metal that might that might be plastic but there's a huge thick bracket uh, and uh, does a really nice job the other thing too is all right let's just uh, set that back up the way that it should go do 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 get me back up there the other thing too and i'll turn that off is there is a really nice base that comes with it it's not showing it here um really really super nice um metal Basically, you drill a hole into your desk and then you insert this metal sleeve into it and it's got a nice collar on the top of it. That worked really well as that that is super solid if you if you install it right, if you get the hole just right. Um, you do need an adapter that goes with this. Let's go back here to oh, I got my remote way over there. chat on right uh let's see there's a big halo that you that holds the mic as well so i did it too where's that my orders your orders i ordered this back in 2017 time is flying by yes yeah, so there's the blue Copy, paste that there. And all right, so this is the boom. 
the, this, this you attach to the boom and then the microphone attaches to it. This thing is huge. Uh, you think that's just a little small thing. But in fact, it is a large thing and you can see it right here. So this is like, this is the microphone, which is about the you know size of my hand. If I spread my fingers about, and then you've got this whole, this whole ring, but it's really nice because these, um, uh, this, this webbing is actually uh, stretchy stuff. And so there's no sound that gets through that. It's very, very nice any vibrations. I, I suppose I could probably really pound on this desk and something would come through, but you would actually hear it through the microphone. Uh, but as far as me tapping on the desk, it's uh, it's really good. So um, yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, and where's that? Uh, let's see here. Copy that just for those of you that are following along. Do, 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 do. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so Mary for doing the live streaming or for or recording from and you can do home recording with Streamlabs o OBS. Um, do 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 Streamlabs OBS. Yeah, go to streamlabs.com. And basically uh, you download, install it, and you can start to set up streams. I actually have considered doing some tutorials on this because I've gone looking for tutorials to, uh, to do some things, and they weren't um, they weren't there weren't very many of them. So, um, but Streamlabs.com, and if I move this, if I move my Streamlabs window over, there we go. You're going to see picture in picture here. Because I'm actually, this is Streamlabs capturing my uh, screen, which of course is capturing the screen, capturing the screen. So, uh, but the remote is the so the uh, the remote for switching between scenes on your on your cell phone is something that uh, is just a free free app that comes along with Streamlabs that you install on your phone, and then what happens is you go to uh, into Streamlabs and you go, you want to not pair it, but uh, you go to connect your remote. And uh, I think both have, to, well, obviously both have to be online, but you use the camera on your phone in order to look at a, a massive QR code. And then uh, suddenly it works. And then you've got your buttons on here, which is really great. The, there's a Joomla user group, uh, London, I was, uh, talking with them or one of the fellows from there because they want to do some live streaming and and he contacted me about some, some things and this is really great um open broadcast studio i think is what it's called let me move this crazy thing back over here now uh streamlabs obs what's the obs open broadcast software open broadcast studio but it uh yeah it really is nice So you have to use a phone. You don't. Ha uh, you mean for the remote? What are you wondering about the phone? If if any of you were using going to use Streamlabs OBS and wanted and were wanted to figure some things out, we could always sort of do a a collab on that or I'm happy to, or even just do, just maybe just do a private Zoom call for a bunch of us and just talk and, and sort it out together, so. Oh yeah, and that, but that's, that's just for the remote, because here, what you can, um, if I go back to the screen here, um, you can also change scenes just by clicking. So you see down, there'd be lots of things moving here, just pay attention to this bottom left of your screen. So here are my different um, different scenes that I have set up. So if I want to switch to me being chat on the right, I have it set up and I just click there. Um, and so now you can see that. You can't see the screen capture, but, uh, and I'll just switch back here. So I switch back to right computer screen. Yeah, Vinny uses OBS, but it's not a cloud account. 
So OBS being open source software, Streamlabs OBS have, I guess, forked it off and then they are, um, they have it cloud-based. So the neat thing about Streamlabs OBS is that, let's say that I um, came to one of your places and wanted to do a live stream, I could log in with my account and all the setup and all the graphics and everything would download from the cloud into your computer and then my studio setup would be just like that. So the original OBS doesn't have that, but Streamlabs OBS does have that. And uh, so that's, uh, and then so they have this remote feature. But yeah, it's not, this is not cloud based. Uh, there's, uh, yeah, Vin uses obsproject.com. Uh, let's see here. Anyway, so just before I change the screen, so if I want to go to this 10 second countdown, I have the scene set up here. I select it, one minute countdown, full screen, chat on the right. And these are all, all of these options here are the same options that appear in the remote. So you don't need the phone for switching. You can do it right on the screen. And of course I'm using two screens. So usually this is off on the left hand side and nobody sees it. Uh, but it does give you that nice transition and there's other things here you'll notice that uh, i've got the uh you know I'll just move this off here down in the bottom right hand of the screen the mouse disappears but i've got the youtube count showing how many people are watching now i could put there's things i can put on for showing how my number of subscribers if you've been watching on twitch when someone follows you can have alerts come up they also have Streamlabs also has a way of Streamlabs OBS. Uh, they have it set up so that you can take donations even before you can monetize your YouTube channel. They also have a store where you can set up merch, put your logo on stuff and sell it through that. So they're, they've, they've carried catered very much to the uh, gaming community. Um, but I, I, I just like the, I mean, the remote is, is cool for me. Okay, well, yeah, I know, but you're talking about larger, longer countdown because every time you start the live stream, you're in the middle of doing something. Yeah, I, I have been doing the minute live stream uh, countdown, but then it's so long, it, t it adds to my editing. So sometimes it goes on very quickly, but I guess today it didn't because I went on, 10 seconds usually works for YouTube, which I did today. I actually did the one minute countdown, went live at 10 seconds, but... Um, and it actually shows up in the recording too. So yeah, one of the things I want to do is have a nice trailer at the beginning that I can just play. And then if it comes on in the middle for people, then that's not a, not a problem. So uh, OBS project, let's take a look at that. Yeah, open broadcast software. Okay, that's what it's called. One of the things that I wish that, uh, and I maybe maybe this version of OBS has it, that I wish that Streamlabs OBS had was automatically changing scenes. So for instance, when I am starting the live stream and I have the counter going, I have to watch the clock. And then when I get down to like two seconds or one second, then I manually switch to the screen. And uh, what they don't have yet in this version of, of OBS that Streamlabs is doing, is that when you reach the end of a scene, it'll automatically transition to another screen, um, which I would like, uh, because I would like, um, I would also like to have some things that run across the screen, like remember to subscribe, uh, or, or, or some message or some news that I could have feed along the bottom um, at certain intervals. But um, uh, I haven't figured out how to do that yet in Streamlabs OBS. I think you can do it in this version of OBS, but it's coming along. And as you can see uh, in Streamlabs OBS, it's version 0.11.15. So they're still not even at a version one yet for what they're doing. But yeah, I, I hear you about the longer countdown. Okay. That's not what I wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring this up. Do, 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 Tim Davis talking. Am I really not? 
No, I'm in here. Do you know how to do it? There's just one. Okay, I heard. I okay. There's just me in this phone call here in Zoom. I'm not missing someone talking away. Because I did hear the doorbell before, but then there's no one in there. Nicky Nicky Nine door or whatever that uh, prank was that you do on people. Uh, I heard that there is a new version of Joomla coming this week, and I think it was uh, on Twitter. Yeah, you heard the doorbell too. Okay, maybe someone popped in and couldn't talk and came out. So, uh, yeah, I thought I saw on Twitter someone saying that there was a new there. There was an alpha of alpha. Oh, alpha seven was that version three or four? Maybe I got confused. That does happen. Four. Okay. I thought that someone said the 3.9.4 was going to be out soon, but uh, and confused. Anyways, read that it read that in passing. So who is working on what right now? And while I'm waiting for that. I need to drag something off my remote here. There we go. Chat on the right. Let's go to the Facebook. See what's happening in the Joomla extensions. Do 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 groups. Joomla extensions. Here we are. 13 hours, a sweet pregnancy countdown. I think we may have, uh, we might have seen this guys before. There's this page up. Vinny says, these facts are specific to June 3.9.4. You're working on creating a template based on CSS grid. Great. I'm trying to, I, for, I was hoping for the topic today to be how to set up uh, the cron in Jotcash, Mary, because I found one of my sites had a database that was like 300, had a table that was 300 megabytes in size because it had been so long since the uh, Jotcash database had been flushed, the cache expires, but they still remember the old, the old, um, the old page or in the database, anyways. The page itself is deleted with the cache, but um, uh, I did. I, I I need to do a bit more work on that, so that's why I went with this topic today. I have a bunch of topics a list that I go to. Uh, only issues that are specifically listed here. Category currently contains no pages or media. All right. So I wonder if that means that they're very close. We will know. June extensions, a sweet pregnancy countdown. Let's check out this sweet pregnancy countdown. And who is it from? I think we maybe have seen this guy's stuff before. Fully responsive in nature. Da, 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 da. Let's go to the demo. Do do going along. I recognize that name. Oh yes, AA extensions. Well, he's pretty busy. Pretty pretty busy. Welcome our baby in 225 days. Woo. Eight weeks, zero days. I don't think. Oh, look at that. Zoom call ended. Um, I wonder if I'm sure that I was in there. Try again. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Get you the link for that too. 
had that all set up. All right. I do not think eight weeks is 225 days. October 27th. Oh, this shows how far along. Okay. The baby is at eight weeks. The baby is due October 22nd. Well, that's kind of cool. The old heart beating away there. Yeah, he comes up with a lot of neat things like that. Here's another one he's got. The responsive 3D image carousel. And responsive calculator. Oh, calculator. Do, do, do. Let's go see the demo. If you ever need a calculator on your site. Well, that's pretty cool. And it's responsive. Yeah, and it changes size. Huh. That is neat. Okay, so. Let's move something off the phone here. There we go. Was there a price on that? Paid download. I think we've seen his, his stuff's not that expensive. Is this the same? I think this might be the same guy that had that clock that we checked out that turned out to not be a analog clock. Um, two sales. Buy it. Ten bucks. Cool. All right. March 9th. We looked at that. Oh, no. Um, jQuery for Joomla. Did we look at this? This seems kind of familiar too. Oh, it's going to be a video. Let's see. Uh, EORS jQuery is a very powerful advanced and modern component that allows you to organize and edit and maintain any kind of JavaScript or style sheet to your site. <laughs> Mary can't think of uh, almost 20 years a uh, single instance where you'd need a calculator on a website. I, can hear, I hear you, Mary. We all have them on our computer. We have them on our phones. <laughs> Uh, Vinny says exactly. Vinny has a cell phone. Uh, okay, so let's see. Um, Yours jQuery is a powerful, advanced, modern component that allows you to organize, edit, and maintain any kind of JavaScript or style sheet to your site. I think we looked at this before. This is just a promo video that they've got. <laughs> How to install it. All right. I need a voice explaining it to me. Uh, hey, remember last week we were watching some videos and uh, I was showing a video and you guys said you could hear it, but it turned out that I did not have the uh, sound feeding into it. It's another thing. Man, I'll tell you that the Watch Me Work live stream scene setups were got really pooched at some point um there's the eoris design and development and they are in thessalonica or thessalonica march 7th nor competition application for easy social eoris google maps Another video, Facebook Pixel, how to create music contests in NOR competition. And check this out. There it is. All right. 
Well, they had nice big red words there for us to follow, so. All righty. Easy Shop 1 to 5 release and new flower template. June Tech. This is March 2nd. This is, uh, we probably didn't look at this. Check out this. Oops, let's go here. Do, 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 June Tech. See demo. I don't know if we've been to the June Tech site before. 20 price. Yeah, so they have made a template for a flower shop. Which, you know, as we know, oh, and they've got the uh, Google map in there. Yep. Uh, as you know, uh, you know, pretty much any template can be made to do whatever. But again, there's so many, uh, lots of people out there that want to, if they Google for a flower shop, template or want to do something like that they like to have things all just set up uh oh uh, Google assistant thought I was talking to it it must be when I oh probably when I said oh they have a Google map nope wasn't that All right. Well, what else we got happening? Or is that it? Or is that it for the show for today? Yeah, well, uh, so I'm happy that things have settled down around here. Happy that I didn't have a super bigger problem. Uh, one of the things one of my long-term things that I've been working on, uh, which is going to advance now that I've got everything on my server there, uh, on my one on my one server, is uh, there's a, a a package that you can add to WHM to cPanel that allows people to uh, allows for backup of individual entire cPanel accounts to Dropbox or to Amazon's an Amazon bucket or things like that. Uh, I want to have things set up so that I can encourage my clients to buy the service so that they're, that they have their hosting account ready to be restored in their possession so that they can take responsibility for that, but also have access to it in case anything happens, uh, happens to me. Um, I just think, yeah, I just really think we need to have, uh, you know, we live in houses that have that are in our names. We have land titles that are in our names. Our cars are in our names. Businesses are in our names. All of our all of our digital stuff should be in our name and in our possession, and in our control. Um, no one says, well, I don't really understand land deeds, so I don't mind uh, the guy I hired owning my house because he manages that stuff. No, we got to have all that together. Oh, you'd like to hear about OBS? So if you set up a Zoom about that, you would join? Great. Okay, I will do that. Um, I will uh, work that into uh, my um, in, into my plans, John. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I'll, re I'll remember that. I don't need to write that down. I just need to go through the pick up paper and pen just for it to register in my head. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that sounds good to do, to uh, have a look at that and set up some scenes. Yeah, the neat thing too is because uh, um, OBS allows you to um, stream all kinds of stuff. So for instance... <clears throat> You need a pro version of Zoom in order to live stream it, to make to live stream a Zoom call to YouTube. I think the pro version. Uh, but you with OBS and using the screen capture and things set up, you can just stream Zoom uh, to YouTube. I don't think that um, 
Streamlabs or OBS or OB, uh, I don't think that Zoom will stream to Twitch. And yet by using the screen capture, you can stream to it. So you can bring the same level, production level to Facebook live streaming and, uh, but also just for recording things on your own at home. So in fact, I use Streamlabs OBS for recording my thumbnails because I, so for today's thumbnail, I just record some video of me standing there holding the tool of the day and my hard hat on. And then I do a screen capture that catches the smile that I want instead of playing around with snap, snap, snap. And um, yeah, so it's, it is a great way for doing recording. Yeah, yeah, and what Vinny's saying there, uses OBS for screen capture, yeah. Yeah, especially, um, uh, I have a client who wants uh, snippets from certain videos um, for the courses that he's doing. So he says, I need this, this little video here. And sometimes you can download the videos and you can edit them or you can use them. But yeah, if you've got, uh, if you can play it on your screen, you can record it with, uh, with OBS. So it's a handy tool. Yeah. So, alrighty. Well, I think that, uh, unless you got something else there in chat, um, I think that'll wrap it up for today. Anything else? I will watch the chat. Unless something shows up in there, I will just start to wrap things up. So 1,276 subscribers. Subscribing uh, has, has dropped off a little bit. Uh, it's, not, it's not screaming up. Oh, uh, what do I use for video editing? Oh, sure, I can show you guys that. I use two things for video editing. One, i got to make sure, I, which glasses do I have on here? Okay. Uh, for screen capturing, uh, for catching mouse movements, that I use Camtasia 3. Um, Camtasia 3. Camtasia.com. Let's see here. Sign in. Let's go in there and sign in. Apparently I've not. Do, do, do. Oh, I am signed in there now. Okay, so uh let's see here yes camtasia and that's and what vinnie said there about a screen capture including mouse capture and editing is what i really uh really like let me just go here Uh, so let me go to f uh, full screen here. So I'm going to open up Camtasia 2018. And so the nice thing about, um, now I'm going to be running, <laughs> this is going to be running a lot of stuff here, but um, I'll do, you, do a quick uh, tour here once this starts. So we'll do a new project. Now, Yes, uh, and I think I wonder if uh, Mary, Mary, are you using Camtasia in your videos? Um, here, let's do this. I'm going to hit record, and now this might cause my camera to freeze for three seconds while the countdown goes on Camtasia. Okay, yes, as I expected. All right. So, uh, oh, Mary uses screencast o -matic. Ivor, yes, Jet Backup. That's the one I was talking about. Yeah, for backup. So, Jet Backup is the one I want to set up. And it lets every customer have access. Yes. Hello, Ivor. Good to see you today. Um, yeah, so here I'm recording this scene right here. And you, now you'll see on the mouse... So if I just go like this, here is my picture, and here is, uh, this is not my phone number anymore, I need to change that. 
and then um, uh, yes, and then as Vinny points out here in the chat, I can left click or I can right click and it will record when you've done that. So I'm just gonna hit stop on the recording which is on my other screen and it goes into here and now here's the recording of what I just did. That's, That's the one that I was talking about. about. Yeah, yeah, for backup. backup. So Jet, Jet Backup is the one I want to set up. Set up. And, and so I'm going to just down at the bottom here, cut some of that off. And I'm going to leave it over here so that the number, the online number works. Uh, so now watch, I'm going to go to cursor effects and I'm going to drag this cursor down to the, um, I just said look over here, see what you can down here to the screen recording and drop it. And now um, when we zoom in here, we'll see there is the mouse automatically highlighted. Hello, Hello Ivor, good to see you today. Um, yeah, watch. so here I'm recording this scene right here, and you, now you'll see on the mouse. Now the nice thing is that up here in the top right corner, I can change how that looks. So for some, <clears throat> I usually go to fifty percent. Uh, opacity. You can always make the mouse bigger, uh, the highlight around it. Um, you can change the scale of the of the mouse, all kinds of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yes, uh, sound, audio effects. Here we go. Um, Cursor effects. Somewhere there's somewhere that you can, uh, when you click, it will actually play the sound. Um, yeah, lots of features like that. Nice thing too is you can zoom, you can zoom in on things. So for instance, when I slide this bar along and we get up to look at my face, I can put that there. I'll go over to animations and I'm going to grab this corner here and I'm going to zoom in. Above the cursor effects, Vinny says. Do do oh oh that's right okay yeah uh, so here we've got um, uh, over here in the side cursor effects and then you can the left click and you can make the left click ring you can also create a, a ripple or a warp when it gets clicked or create a target. Let's put a scope and we'll just drag that down there. But so anyway, so here we've zoomed in. And as you see at the bottom here, there's just this little uh, uh, transition movement point. So if I move the bar back to here. Um, yeah, yeah, so here yeah. I'm recording zooms this into where you right want. here. And you, now you'll see on the mouse. And if you want to zoom out to a different space at that point, you can uh, go out or move things around. So you end up with some really nice see, transitions. So if I just go like this, here is my picture, and here is, ah, this is not my phone number anymore, I need to change that. All right, now notice, ah, this is not my phone number anymore. I clicked on the number, and then you get that target showing where I had clicked. So it's pretty cool. They also have an auto zoom thing in here that tries to follow where you're at, but uh, I've never, had a success with it to the point that I wanted to just automatically do it. I like, kind of like to just manually do things. So um, yeah, so OBS is great. And, and you can do a screen capture of uh, anything that's on your screen. You could use this as, as well. Uh, sorry, OBS, Camtasia. So OBS does capture screens. Uh, Camtasia does too, but this is Camtasia is great for all of these like doing editing. Now you mentioned uh, John about editing, so I like uh, so for instance, let's say this part here, where I uh, uh, let's say I after doing this recording I forgot, um, and here instance, is uh, this is my, not my phone number anymore. I need to change that. So at about that point, I will go up here to annotations. And I'm going to drag this down here, and I'm going to say uh, where I talk about my phone number. Um, please don't call me. <laughs> and I can actually drag this around. 
so that this box shows up and then Picture. uh and here is uh this is not my phone number anywhere. okay not my phone number so now i'm going to slide that thing over and more i need to change that and then um so this is really super nice for tutorials uh, and as well with the just since we're going through things with this call out i can put a transition in there let's put a circle stretch in there now watch what happens. Not my phone number anymore. I need to change that. It kind of has this nice and then, stretching um, out from a circle there. Uh, yes, yeah, and then, then oh, OBS has mouse record, mouse cursor recording too. Interesting. That would. Uh, I wonder if that was that work on live streaming. That would be great if it was on live streaming. Wow. Anyway, so John, I really like this for editing. Uh, this is super easy. Uh, so for instance, also another like annotations that say, oh, there's my phone number. I don't want people to see it. Of course, it would be on there the whole time. So let's just pretend that it was just this point here. I can go to uh, the uh, blur here and I can draw a box around that around that phone number thing and um, I assign that blur to it so you'll see that here is ah, this is not my phone number anymore I need to change that and blur it out and so then, I really uh, like this for an annotating different things in videos and um, uh, transitions and that now that's one. Now as for my home videos and for videos for client, I could actually could use this for videos that I'm making for my clients, but I also use, let me just, I'm going to leave that open. See how many things I can get to, oh, I guess I closed it anyways. See how many things I can get going on my computer today. Movie Studio 16 uh, from Sony. This is not their pro version. Uh, but this uh, I use for editing home videos and promotional videos. So for instance, here is a uh, video. Now, uh, what I like about this is you can have unlimited tracks. Uh, so here is a video that I'm working on for um, my client. So we interviewed him um, in his home office in San Francisco. Or the uh, ignition source comes into contact with the right mixture. We had him narrating the video of this backdraft fire. This actually, this fire actually took place up in the um, just about a two hours drive away from here. This is a very dramatic example of a smoke explosion or backdraft event. It's clearly been a very large energetic fire. They. So what this offer is, Combustion check out the slow motion been, of this. Uh, withheld in the building or in the major room there, and it finally has the right ignition source presented at the right hand end of the room, and that ignites all of the combustible gases inside the room. Yeah, so Vinny says there he uses Premier CC and he pays for the Adobe CC, so he's got legit versions of Adobe products. Yeah, and I think that's software by subscription, right? Software access by subscription. Uh, you're paying each month for that. Um, anyway, so in this particular uh, software that I, I use, uh, and there's a 30-day free trial of Sony Vegas um, Movie Studio Platinum, it's called. Um, uh, I've got multiple tracks here. You can do fades. You can uh, synchronize the sound very nicely, which you can do in OBS. Uh, I just kind of like this more for laying out, to, for working on my on my home videos and that. Uh, there's some stuff that's easier to do in OBS and I'll do it in that and I may actually produce that file and then go and use it here. One thing that OBS does not do is um, you cannot save a video with the transparency. So for instance, um, Let's see here. That's this URL in the bottom corner is a PNG. If I uh, in the bottom left hand corner <coughs> here is a PNG. If I were to produce, I could produce a video. I think in Movie Studio Platinum, where 
this background would be transparent. Although now that I say that, I don't know if I can. Uh, but any video you produce in Camtasia, anything that's transparent turns out to be black. And so it's very hard to kind of just do a fade out of one. Um, could be wrong though. Anyways, tons of tons of great things in here. And Vinny says that is softer by subscription. So, so that's what I use for editing videos. But for yeah, so uh, I for my uh, when I download a Watch Me Work live stream from Twitch, I toss it into uh, Camtasia because it's easy for me to just clip out the parts that I want. Plus, also I should show you a neat and and all the software has this stuff, right? I'm not going to say that change there. Um, let's go to Camtasia and open up the most recent one. Um, you can you can create things and you can group things. Let's see. It's uh, what's the most recent one? There's Watch Me Work 27. Let's see if that one's still in there. So it's going to be a big one to look at. Yeah, here it is. So it's going to load down at the bottom. You'll see this slowly going in. So I'm going to just wait for a second because I can see uh, <laughs> I can see my frames are uh, slowing down or perhaps even dropping here while this comes across. Um, do do do. Oh, yeah, this is a big. This is an hour and 40 minutes long. So, what I've done is I download the Twitch stream and I drag it into here and I cut out a few things uh, that I just don't want to be on the Encore performance on the YouTube channel. We're almost there. At the bottom there, scrolling the way behind me now. Maybe for this part, I'll turn my camera off. There we go, just about at the bottom. There we go. So you'll see this Cyber Salt Stinger, my logo opening, I have as a separate file. I drag that there. This is a really nice fade that I put on here, this green box down here. I don't think that I can, can't zoom in on that. Um, but check out what I can do here. If I go up to library and I go to basic Joomla, so I have these resources stored in a sort of little library up here. And you'll see I've got a thing here called uh, watch me work cluster, which is not the cluster that some of you guys think about with some of my videos. Uh, if I drag it down here, it's a group of things. So it's my opening stinger. And then this one here is this particular item here is my name coming in. When I put that on. And then I have further along the way. A thing reminding people to subscribe that pops up. So I have that those grouped together and spaced out and when I drag them down and you can go to um, I can ungroup these and then all my stuff is there and so the next time that I want to move remind someone to subscribe I just slide this box along and there it is. It just works along. From uh, belonging to the I Love Old Time Radio. Hey, you. Isn't that really nice talking about Vinny's site there? Yeah, and then there's DaVinci Resolve that Vinny has mentioned, which is a great free video editor. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so it's certainly worth looking at to checking out all these different things. Finding something that works for you for what you want to do. If you're going to do tutorials, then I definitely would say Camtasia is the best. It's just out there. I mean, there's other things that do it, but uh, if you're going to do tutorials or screen captures, if you're editing home videos, you know, I could I, I could edit home videos with Camtasia and I could have it do very nicely. Uh, kind of like Sony 
uh, the, the the one that I use. But really, find something that and try a bunch of different ones and see which one clicks and makes sense. Because may very well be that you go to one software and it's like I don't know how to do this or I don't know how to copy or anything like that. But uh, and then you go somewhere else and it's like oh this this makes sense. So I think it's the same way that gets people. Uh oh. I thought maybe I was frozen here, but I'm looking at the screen capture of me there. I thought the computer had crashed, but no, I'm still there. Uh, so you said that uh, DaVinci Resolve is on par with Premiere, but it handles utilizing the GPU a lot better than Premiere. Let's just pop over there. DaVinci Resolve. Da Vinci Resolve, Black Magic Design, 3D titles. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess too. What I would say is, if you um, if you're looking for something, yeah, I would definitely try a couple of the free ones to see if they'll do what you want. Because if you get into something that you uh, that you find that is doing what you want and it's free, then Bob's your uncle as we say on the West Coast here, and also in uh, Mary Poppins. Dick Van Dyke says that. Um, but then, uh, yeah, because then you've got something. So DaVinci Resolve would work for you. Um, and there's things that you can do, then 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 you're all set. Um, for There are some things that I cannot do in this version of Vegas Platinum the, the, the that I do. For instance, with the green screen, um, when I wanted to crop out the image of me in front of the green screen so that I don't have artifacts over here, maybe this is not working so well. And there was one point where I wanted to just sort of just slowly circle around myself and really tighten in only what was being picked up of me on the on the screen. And I couldn't do that. I need the pro version of Vegas for that. So, uh, but yeah, this definitely looks, uh, uh, I would just, just, just on Vinny's recommendation alone, I would definitely check this one out and see if it'll do what you want. Um, certainly have a lot of stuff there. Rotoscoping. Sounds painful. Um, yeah. Uh, that's definitely something to check out. Own for half the cost. So, oh wait, is this the one that you used? You said it, that you said it was free, Vinny? Because it says you can get DaVinci Resolve Studio for two ninety nine. There must be part of this that is free then. Do 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 do. do. Or did I misread that it was free? Da Vinci Resolve, or do they have a basic free version? Oh, there's a pro version. Okay, yeah, so try the free version and then. Um, yeah. Oh, there you go. Revolutionary tools for editing, visual effects, motion graphics, color correction, and audio post-production all in a single application. And then the full version is 299. Multi-user collaboration features lets editors, colors, effects artists, and sound engineers all work together in the same project at the same time, plus 3D tools, dozens of Resolve FX, and more. So. Yeah, just start uh, start using something and see if it will do what you want it to. But for uh, screen capturing, Camtasia is great. Uh, there's the one that uh, obviously uh, screen castlematic that Mary is using. Obviously, that's a good one because her her tutorials look really good and uh, and that's good. Uh, Mary, does that have Zoom? I don't remember if you zoom on yours, and I don't mean like the Zoom phone calls, but do you zoom in on things? 
Sometimes, like when I'm making a tu quick tutorial for a, a client, I don't always zoom in showing them because that's a, that you know to do that really well is fiddly. Um, yeah, so Vinny says if you're just a single person, a uh, single user, the free version is fine. So uh, yeah, so that's um, uh, yeah. So actually zooming in and out on the screens to highlight things. I don't know if man, I can't remember. And I've watched your tutorials, Mary, but it never picked up on that. But it does. Okay, Mary says it does. But that you're not super fancy. Yeah, sometimes I don't get uh, super fancy. Like I was saying with some of my client stuff, just for them to watch the whole thing. But if something is going to go on YouTube and be there and watched by a lot of people, yes. If it's something I'm showing a client uh, that's half an hour long, showing them a process of how to do something. I may not just go back and zoom unless it's produced. So, yeah, all right. So you could check that one out. Uh, John likes a script function in SOM. What's SOM? It's escaping me. I may have sacrificed my acronym understanding thing though because I haven't had breakfast, so my brain's only sharing a certain amount of nutrients. S O M Sony. No. Oh screen oh screencast matic uh, the script function must do something then. I don't know what. Uh, screen, let's check this out. Screencast O Matic. Screencast O Matic. Isn't it nice that we don't need to spell everything properly when we search? So just figure for us. Uh, let's see this, the pricing here. $1.50 oh, a month. That's pretty good. Full editing suite, add system audio, drawing tools, import video, scripted recordings. Uh, you like the script function. Oh, script as in uh, reading a script. And not, I was thinking like as in programming a script. They have team plans for this too, eh? Ten nine fifty a month for ten computers. Well, that's pretty good. Public to screencast matic and YouTube, quick share to Facebook. Screencast matic and let's see their support. I was going to search for scripting, but screencast omatic scripting. Working with scripts and captions. Let's see here. Working with scripts and cap uh, with working with scripts are a great way to create videos with perfectly timed narration. Preparing uh, preparing to create your videos just as important in the process as actually recording a video. Well thought out script can organize your video into logical sections that flow together to deliver the key points. You can create a, you can create a new scripts from the manage recordings view in the video editor. Clicking the scripted button launches you directly into the script tool so you can start to create each section of your script and then add narration. They, is this an actual video? Okay. You have the choice of typing in each section of your script and recording your narration. You can also import your script via a text file if you want to use another word processing application. Okay. Once you decide an approach on approach, you can add narration to each section of your script. Just select a section. 
of your script and click the re, uh, record narration button to record your voice. You can easily redo the narration if you don't get it right and can also use the editor when the recording is complete to refine narration. Okay, cool. Now you have your script and narration complete, it's time to record your video. Again, you just select a selection, a section, and this time click the recorder video button. Okay, that's cool. All right, so I see what they're doing here. You have your script, you uh, record it, and then you listen to yourself and you go along and record the screen actions while you're listening to yourself. That's pretty cool. I, uh, I have done some, uh, some of the narration work that I've done. I've just narrated the script and listened to it and then done the recording. And then um, I've also found too that if I talk too fast in the narration, I can uh, split the narration up and I'll, I'll, I'll fit it so I need a little bit more time to do the mousing around. So. But once you, you know, once you get it down, you understand sort of what you're doing, uh, what you, what your habits are, uh, because you think, okay, say now let's now let's open a new window and check this out. You just learn that it takes you a couple seconds to do that, or you want to transition on your screen, so then you pause and you wait. Uh, if you just read something quickly, then um, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And now this is cool here. Your video is now done. We've automatically created a captions file directly from your script, which will show in videos hosted at screencastomatic.com. Oh, they host videos there. If you use another service such as YouTube, you can export a captions file and upload to that service for your captions. Okay, so that's that's cool. Um, I, I, I've always never, I never have a full manuscript for stuff my own stuff even even when I preach I'll preach for half an hour and I don't I you know I have some little notes and stuff but so what I've been doing with my videos is I let YouTube guess at what I've said and then I'll go back and correct it that's that's just so time-consuming and fiddly that's that's for that's that's for people that really like to do things organized and um, yeah but that's a cool this this looks pretty cool um yeah so john if you i i definitely check this out john especially for the price oh my goodness a dollar fifty a month for even just to try it pro record pro video see four a month deluxe plus hosting plus secure backup i don't know if you really need that uh maybe you do if you do great but um just save to your desktop it gives you the option yeah now here they do have uh music tracks this is the number of tracks that they're offering you okay uh the free version yeah draw while recording zoom in while recording okay so but dollar fifty a month oh my goodness look i mean that's incredible uh, you know, they do have their hosting for hosting your stuff. So I, I, I don't have, I haven't looked into their hosting. I mean, it's new. Um, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll say this. If their hosting is like Vimeo in that if you change a video, you can upload it and, the, uh, and replace it. Uh, so let's say here's how to log in. And then Joomla 4 comes out. So you make another tutorial. Here's how to log in and uh, to Joomla 4 and you can upload it over in the same place as your other video without changing the URL that is great because Vimeo does that uh, but um, so if they've got hosting for something like that then uh, that would be good oh SOM has speech to text uh, Mary you use happy on your videos I don't know what that is. Happy? And there's a wink, so I'm missing something. <laughs> SOM has even text to speech. Yeah, you know, for a dollar fifty, I should just even try that out.
Uh, I'd be interested to know if it res records in high def, 1920 by 1080. Oh, the music is all oh, happy. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you know what, Mary? Uh, here, I, I was thinking I would say this at some time. Um, I personally am not a fan of videos that have music running in the background because uh, I, I find them distracting. I know also it's challenging for people that have a um, maybe a hearing impediment. Uh, but, uh, I mean, there's people that love music throughout videos, and then there's people that don't love music throughout videos, and I'm one of them. But I will say that watching your video the other night, I thought, you know what? If, of any video that I've watched, that is the least distracting, least obtrusive, and actually... I didn't even mind your music going in the background. So I don't know. It might be the song that it is, but it might also be that you just got the volume just right for it. But I, your that video is the exception to my rule, which is please do not play music in the background for the whole thing. So good job on that. Dollar <laughs> fifty US, which is like twenty dollars Canadian. Yeah, dollar fifty US. Here's what we do in Canada. Um, Let's see here. Open up a calculator first of all. So dollar fifty, okay, dollar fifty, and we just multiply by one point three three, which is usually where it's at. So it's two bucks a month. Two bucks a month. Yeah, if they record in, if if it's nineteen twenty uh, by ten eighty, that would be great for doing that. Uh, publishing the Google Drive Dropbox in Vimeo. That's pretty cool too. Um, again, yeah, interesting. Like what Vimeo, uh, that video I showed you earlier about the backdraft, there was something wrong in that video and my client pointed it out. So I, uh, it's already embedded in a course. And so, but anyways, I fixed the uh, video. I produced a new one and I uploaded the Vimeo to the same spot. And they didn't even have to change the course because the course uses the same URL. So that is great. Yeah, I could search in Bing a dollar fifty to yeah, but it's all right. That's what we do in Canada. We just add a third. We just add a third. We're not so worried about down to the penny. We know. We know if we're going to pay for something American or in the euro or. British pounds that it's just going to change uh, another thing that would be uh, that's interesting to look into for video hosting is do they have for instance here it says secure password for videos or make private yeah one of the things that I really like about Vimeo okay it will record in 1080 you can try the ver free version and check it out cool uh, one of the, one of the things about Vimeo is that you can restrict playback to a certain domain. So not all, so you can say here's the video, here's the password, but uh, you can uh, but what you can also do is say on Vimeo say do not allow this video to be played back unless it's on xyz.com uh, domain, which is really great for us for my client with the courses because we have uh, Vimeo. Uh, embedded in a PowerPoint which is converted to a presentation for the uh, for the course and uh, so when people are viewing the course it pulls from Vimeo but Vimeo looks and says are you watching are you gonna watch this on firewise learning academy.com and if it's not then it says oh, I'm sorry I can't give you that video so that would be uh, that's cool too so I who knows if their hosting does that 100 gigabytes is uh, that's their bandwidth. Do they say what their storage is for their hosting? Securely backup recordings. Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty neat. You know, it's it's just so incredible the time that we live in. I know I keep saying this, but so many great options for different things to do, and companies that are doing things, and tools, and. Uh, I have to say, you know, my initial response when I see something new like this is like, oh, but no, Camtasia is great. I've got it. And, and I, uh, but I'm more increasingly just self-talking myself, thinking like, man, if I check this out, instead of 
buying Camtasia for whatever I pay, I forget what it is, $180 or, um, let me just log out here, sign out, and see how much Camtasia costs. Uh, Camtasia.com. Buy now. Yeah, 334. And then um, maintenance. So, man. So, anyways, I figure a yeah, dollar fifty a month, two dollars a month. If if I ah, I'm gonna check that out because if I can start doing that stuff, if I can do what I do in Camtasia, I'm saving myself three hundred bucks a year. And they tend to come out with an update, so that is cool. Uh, do I? Uh, uh, Ivor's asking Mary, do you know if it's possible to show a background video from YouTube in Template Creator CK without the buttons? Uh, didn't I say I was on, I'm on version 3 of Camtasia? No. Uh, no. Camtasia 2018 is what I'm on. John says, seems that you can decide the URL yourself on their host. Let's see. <laughs> You've got a finished video ready to be uploaded. You can choose to trim your video so only a portion of it is published. You can move around these sliders to position where you want your video to start and end. To publish the whole recording, make sure the sliders are at the start and end of your video. We recommend you record at 720p, which will give you best results when uploading. If you didn't record at one of the HD sizes, then you can still resize and reposition the video to fill the 720p size. Let's get started. Click on the menu icon here to pull up all of your upload options. Click Upload to Screencast-O-Matic. If you are using a free version, or if it's your first time to upload, you will be prompted to, to add your account. Go to 125, thank you very much. It will launch a web browser to a page. Password may access the video. Set up a link and choose a custom URL to access the upload, explained in more detail here. Choose this option to keep the cursor, remove completely, or highlight it. Choose this option to keep the cursor, remove com Choose a custom URL to access the upload. Ex a custom URL to access the upload. Let's see, so you create a custom URL. Is that, is that adding a name? Yeah, that would be interesting to see how they do that. And would that control the video be from being seen somewhere else? See, the thing with the Vimeo is, is that if someone were to get a hold of the URL, the Vimeo link, and share it with someone else, they could watch it, but not only they could only watch it on the on the page. That's what I was wondering. But to get, to get a custom link, are you cut? Is that for customizing the name, or is it for customizing uh, where uh, restricting where it's played? Uh, I see that they do put searchable. Yeah. You went back and said, I use Camtasia 3. I did say, okay. Well, who knows? I guess it's their host, your part, your, your yeah, I think so, John. Uh, Vinny, uh, interesting when you said you just went back and I did say that I use Camtasia 3. Uh, I've been watching Black Mirror and there's a really uh, interesting one where people, uh, are everything is recorded that they see and then when someone says something, they just use the little remote and then they broadcast to a screen showing what the person actually said. So, All right, well, if I said Camtasia 3, I said it and I was probably wrong um or else i was thinking something else in my head but i use camtasia 2018 but i'll tell you check out this screencast-o-matic as as john is 
because that looks pretty pretty good i think i'm going to try their free one and play around with it a little bit because i am looking to uh cut costs uh man i you know i have so many uh, as we all do so many monthly things and then yearly things that i that we pay for i definitely will uh i'm gonna check that out because i'm all for saving a bit of money well this has been again unexpectedly abundantly productive on a number of topics today plenty of things to check out here too all right well help if you buy it search for a coupon as well all right all right uh, john says here's uh the help section on their hosting Three minutes, let's check it out. When you log in, you'll be directed to your account page on screencastomatic.com, where you'll see a list of all the screencasts you've uploaded to your account. This list will only show your uploads and not list recordings you may have on your local computer. To browse the recordings you have on your local computer, you can click on the Open Video Editor button to launch the app on your computer. By default, you'll see the last few uploads sorted by the most recent ones first. Clicking on the title of an upload will take you to the playback page for that upload, and as you mouse over them, you'll also see icons for each upload. Clicking the first icon will show you linking options as well as the embed code and a download button for this upload. The direct link box will give you a link you can copy and share for this upload. Clicking this icon will give you access to quick share buttons which you can use to directly share via Twitter and Facebook. A custom link is a way to create a more user-friendly, unique link to this upload, which you can also override later. This is handy if you want to share a link to this upload, then later if you upload a new version of the screencast, you can reuse the custom link to point to your new version, so you don't have to send out another link. Okay, so that's the interesting thing. So. Uh, that that's uh, a different way than Vimeo does it but basically okay so if you uh, your custom link would be that long URL there which and then it would be how to log into Joomla and then the direct link would be at the top here would be your this is your Joomla 3 the video of how to log into Joomla 3 but then when version 4 comes out you would then change you would use your custom link and point to the new direct link. Okay. And so in that sense, people would have it. Um, I wonder how that would work with embedding. Now they've got the iframe here. As long as you're, as long as you can embed the custom link, then that would work really, uh, really well in that instance. You can also set the custom link when you actually do the upload in the recorder app. The embed code creates HTML code that you can copy and paste into your page to embed this upload for playback. You can pick from some preset width sizes or enter a custom width for the embed. To copy the code, you can click in the box and then right click and select copy from the menu or use the standard copy hotkey. Finally, you can click this button to download a video file of this upload to your local computer. The second icon gives you the option of choosing which channels the screencast is in, which we cover in more detail in our tutorial about channels. Then you have an icon to edit the details for this video, like title and description. You can set a password which is required before viewing the video, and you can choose search settings for the video, including setting the video to be non-searchable. And finally, one you can use if you'd like to delete this upload. Besides the individual options, you can also do some bulk operations on your uploads by clicking the Manage Uploads button. After clicking the button, you'll see check boxes next to each upload, and you'll be able to check those boxes to select multiple uploads. Then you can choose from some actions to add all the selected uploads to a channel, or remove all the selected uploads from all channels, or to delete the selected uploads. One other useful feature when using the Manage Uploads button 
if you first enter a search term to narrow down the upload shown and then click the Manage Uploads button. You can use the Select All box here to apply the action to all uploads in the search results without having to individually click on each one. That's it for this tutorial on managing uploads. For more tutorials, click on the Tutorials link at the top of the page at screencastomatic.com. Create, share, and experience video with Screencast-O-Matic. Huh. Alrighty. Hey, Mary, you mentioned about the uh, coupon. Do they have an affiliate program or referral program? Um, if they do, paste your link in the paste your link in the chat there. Well, that looks very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Definitely worth checking out. Okay. Well, excellent. I'm going to have to uh, maybe watch this back because just to keep track of all the notes and all the things we've talked about here and links to check out uh, if I'm going to put them in the description later on. But uh, yeah, so uh, Mary, if you've got a referral link, go ahead and paste it or send it to me or whatever and, I'll, I'll, uh, and we can check that out through there. Yes, uh, another uh, another interesting thing. Uh, I'll tell you, we're just talking about referrals. Uh, let's see, and this one has saved me a bunch of money that checks. Uh, now I just have to remember how to get into my ex <laughs> add-ons here settings. Oh, here it is. Here is this one here. Um, do, 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 All right, let me get you a link here because this is, uh, invite others. This is called Honey. And, um, Should find a link. There we go. I a number of times. This is an app that runs in Chrome. What's that? Error. Try again. Do 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 do. I just have to go to this. There, is that a link that you guys can see? Error, edit, oh, come on. Let's see, uh, view your invitation. What's going on here? Add honey, it's free. All right, let's do it this way. Yeah, honey, when you're checking out, looks, why have I not? Allowed to post links. Air, edit, and try again. All of a sudden, I'm not allowed to post links. Testing. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, and this is not, this is going to stop me down here. Did that go in there? I wonder why I can no longer post links. I was just posting links. Right? Let me just post this link. Does it work? That link works. You don't need to po click on that. There's something goofy about this link that it does not like. Well then. Ah, let's do this then. Let's go into 
cybersalt.org basic Juma forward slash administrator and log in do 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 you can do it hamsters components sh404 sef aliases let's make a new one alias honey the target url is that let's save that let's open up basic joomla let's go to forward slash honey control a copy aha all right there i made an alias it's interesting. I wonder, uh, yeah, if they don't allow links to Honey, I wonder if YouTube has blocked them for some reason. Maybe if Google has a competing, maybe Google has a competing product or, or they flagged it. Yeah, that's odd. Anyways, there you go. Did you like that quick tutorial on creating an alias using the SH404 SEF? And that is why people should have their own web page, their own URL. So you can do stuff like that. I probably could use a shortened URL somewhere as well, but more fun to do it yourself. Anyways, Honey is really great. When you go to check out on things, it looks for coupons. And um, yeah. Alrighty, well. even more things yes and you can do it in redirect too yes i know i uh, i that's a that's a video to do you like to use short.cm short.c yeah it started for free sign up yeah URL shorteners. All right. Well, now I need to get something to eat so I can get ready to uh, for my little presentation tonight. And also, so I might think I feel that I'm on the verge of forgetting my name too. So that's always good to throw a little sugar into the blood <laughs> to get that going. Everybody, I really enjoyed today again. This is great. Uh, yeah, so John, we'll take a look at uh, OBS. We'll do a um, uh, do a uh, Zoom call, and um, then you use that for Twitter for uh, your shorten your links for I Love Old Time Radio. Cool. Yeah, I just like uh, um, your name is Tim. Yes, T I M. Mitt spelled backwards. Uh, so yeah, I. Um, yeah, so yeah, so we will do the OBS Streamlabs thing. And um I will touch base with you, John, to see what time is best for you, and then we'll set it so that others can make it. And maybe uh maybe we'll either uh do it as a yeah, Zoom call would be good for asking questions and, and touching base. Yeah, we'll do that. And thanks for all the other ideas and stuff here, everyone. So uh uh everybody who is still on here right now. Thank you very much for watching and for your support of the channel, for being friends of the channel and online friends of mine and uh, hanging out together. So um, I will uh, talk to you later. I got to find a button here so I don't go looking for it. All right. Uh, thanks for your support of this channel. Like I said, enjoy your Joomla sites and God bless. <laughs>